Hey, what's up, fam? Welcome to the Relationship Cheat Code, where we give you the game, mm -hmm. helping you to stress less and experience your absolute best in your relationship. This right here is my queen, my boo thing, my baby's mama, the love of my life, my wife, my princess, my sweetheart, my indelible, impeccable, sensational, spectacular. <laughs> what? Beautiful wife, y'all, Iana. Oh, my goodness. I think you just keep adding new words every time. Yeah. What's need, up, I everybody? Need you need, need to expand? Words. I need some more words. I'm going to use the same ones from here until the day we die. Really, bro? This right here, this is my dapper, debonair, amazing confidant, my protector, my homie, my baby's daddy, the love of my life, the only... The only calm, cool breeze. The only water that can put out this fire. And um, I love him. Mm. Hi, Yeeze. What's up? What's up, boo? How you feeling? I am um, glad to be sitting right here next <laughs> to you again for another <laughs> episode of the Relationship Cheat Code. You know, I'm ready to chop it up and, and um, process some things. Yes, indeed. Um, with you. Um, and so I'm doing well. I mm -hmm. feel enthusiastic i feel you feel enthusiastic yeah, excited i feel optimistic i feel um encouraged and and i feel present so mm -hmm. those are where i'm at with my feelings where you at where you be i feel privileged i feel privileged because um if you all don't know, we have um, we get questions all the time and we have begun going through and really focusing in on some of the questions that you all have sent in. We're going to shift into bringing you guys on live with us um, so that you can share your issue, or your concern live um, and, um, and we can give you feedback. Right. Because yeah. um, we all are dealing with some version of the same thing. If it's not the same situation, it's a similar feeling, emotion, yeah. whatever. Right. And. Uh, if you ain't there now, you might have been there or you're going to be there in a minute. Mm -hmm. So I think it's um, a privilege mm -hmm. to like sit in the space of being able to hear people's situations and their stories. Um, mm -hmm. And today is a story like no other. Like no other. But it's, uh, but, 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 but it's actually not. We it's not a new story for us. It's not like we've not, never yeah. seen it. So let mm -hmm. me just be clear. Like it's not like so unique, but it's it's a doozy. Yeah, it definitely is um, a doozy. But but, you know, because we've been at this for a minute like you know the combined experience that we have is over 30 plus years in the mental health space so we see situations y'all we see we I see like how situations. you just like flex that real real smooth no, it's just like, like it's because like, we've done this for a minute it's <laughs> been a uh, combined year 30 30 just years for a minute. yeah <laughs> just, for, just for a moment you know, let me just let y'all know real quick bucket, you know and, and uh, we got over two decades <laughs> of um being married and so um we got experience in these streets and so we help couples all the time. And so when we get questions that come into us, um, I feel privileged and I feel honored that somebody is entrusting us with their situation, yeah. with their story, and really asking for some advice, some encouragement, a whole word when it comes to what, should, what, they, sh what they should do next yeah. and whether or not there's hope. And so we don't take it lightly. If you have any questions, please email us and we'll make sure that we treat it with the utmost respect and we'll honor um, you and our response and so again I just want to throw that piece out there yeah and we'll give you the email in one second it'll just come up on the screen or we'll drop it in the comments one or the other um, because I'm not sure which one we're going to give you um, we have quite a few emails mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to give the right one but look um, I want to just set the tone by saying this one of the number one things I was saying this um, I don't know. I was in a sister circle. I was somewhere. We were talking. I was saying this the other day that, you know, there are three things that are at the top of the list in terms of what people come to us yeah. for, the, what they join our community for, what they're dealing with. Um, one of those things is communication. Mm -hmm. People oftentimes are saying we need help with our communication. Yeah. Um, another one. Uh, is sex and mm -hmm. intimacy issues like man like something is wrong yeah. it was right but now it's not or it ain't never been right and we really need to work on this um, and then probably one of the most common is infidelity yeah. cheating mm -hmm. um, and I just want to say this right here for everybody out there in them social media streets all of the non-professionals all of the non-married people all of the people who just had a boyfriend or a girlfriend, all of the people who don't have no lived experience. I do want you to know that that people experience something as difficult and 
traumatic and funky as infidelity and they do get to the other side yes. and it is not an automatic deal breaker and it is the couple and the individuals in the cup in the couple dynamic is their prerogative to decide what they want to prioritize mm -hmm. and I've seen it happen I've seen it happen more than once more than twice over and over again where they are better now on the other side of that than they were before even yeah. before the infidelity that they would not have chosen to go down that route mm -hmm. But because they've had that challenge and because they were really serious about doing their work, figuring out like, what the hell is going on? Mm -hmm. Why did I do that? And what was going on with us? And what do I need to do differently? And how do we not rebuild the relationship that we have? But how do we create a new relationship? Because that relationship is dead. Mm -hmm. When there has been infidelity or cheating, that relationship is dead. There is no resuscitating it. There is no CPR you can give it. You have to grieve it. You have to let it go. And then you can build a new relationship. Yeah. You really can. So I just want to put that out there. Um, infidelity is something that people are dealing with all the time and they do successfully overcome it. And with that being said, <laughs> this is the caveat. Like, this, this is the, <laughs> and but. with that being said, <laughs> let me just say that there are things that can happen as a result mm -hmm. of cheating that yes. complicate, exacerbate, and just fuck your shit up. Yes. Just excuse my language. It muddies the water. It it don't just muddy the water. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just black tar. You can't see nothing. Wow. It's just it's just wow. really funky. Ooh. So that's, so that's, that's deep right there. So 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 that so the relationship has been hit with the infidelity, and I've got to deal with that. That's one trauma, and that's what a lot of folks are dealing with, trying to figure that out. But when there's some other consequences, some other things that are now sitting in your face, sitting in your lap, baby, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother situation. You know, it's like, it's yeah. like complex trauma. Mm -hmm. It's complex trauma, and we're we going to talk about it today. Yeah, I'm going to hold space for that for a moment, because somebody watching right now may be in that space in that relationship where they just recently made a discovery or it's been within the past month, maybe even the past year. Mm -hmm. And you feel like you're reeling from dealing with the information that you discovered, the video that you watched, the text messages that you saw, the phone calls that you may have heard, or maybe even the bed that you saw him sleeping in with somebody else Lord. or her sleeping in with somebody else. And so when my wife says that, muddying the waters is an understatement that it's like black tar that's real y'all mm -hmm. that's real it's lights out it's it's i've used this word before apoplectic when you enter into a space where you have no no words for the degree of anger and 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 rage that you're you can't even express it and so i want to make room for those people who are in that space because it's heavy it's heavy. And my wife, she mentioned that there's grief that's attached to the fact that you've lost your current relationship, your marriage, um, um, the dynamic in which you all used to operate under. It's different now. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a stain. Um, there's a soreness. There's an overwhelmingness. There's a burden. There's um, what feels like disaster, utter disaster and chaos that you may be dealing yeah. with right now. Your life has been flipped upside down, fam. And um, there's a number of questions that you're being confronted with. Why me? What could I have done differently? Mm -hmm. Is it my fault? Um, should I have done this a different way? This right here is one of those phases when it comes to the grieving process um, that we consider, we call it bargaining. There's actually several phases in the grieving process, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And so a lot of people find themselves in this place where they're bargaining. They're trying to figure out, like, what could I have done differently to prevent this experience from happening? Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to figure it out in conjunction with the anger, in conjunction with the, the denial. You know, you're trying to figure it out. And, and I'm just here to say that, that we're holding space for you. Um, you're not wrong. It's okay for you to be here mm -hmm. in this place of processing in this place of allowing the pain to simmer for a second, for a moment, maybe even longer, at some point, you're going to have to move. And that's just the reality of the situation. So we'll get there. 
we haven't even shared the story yet, but we'll I get know. There. I don't know if we're gonna get um, that far today because this story is yeah complex. Yeah, yeah it's complex. <laughs> but I just wanted to lift that up that that we know that you can get there because for sure we've coached a number of couples mm-hmm. to get to the other side. We've actually been able to get to the other side ourselves. Oop, there it and is. So so yeah, so it's it's definitely possible, and you can come out bigger, better, and more better than you ever have been. But, but you got to do the work. But let me say this. So my husband represents so beautifully, um, I mean, really, babe, so beautifully in terms of how you um, just elevate the that feeling space that people are in when they yeah, go through something so like that. And I want to lift up the other side, the person who did the betraying. Mm. And this is the person who's written in today. We're going to share their um, question. Um, they also, I know y'all sometimes don't want to hear it. But oftentimes, unless they are a sociopath, uh, a psychopath, unless they are, you know, in a place where they are really um, getting victims and you just happen to be their long term victim because you have really attracted a sociopathic um, partner, which that might need to be an episode we need to do Mm -hmm. um, because there there are there are um, certain indicators of what that looks like. So we might have to come back to that. But. They, th- that person is also in pain. They've also caused uh, uh, havoc in the relationship. Mm. They're going through all kinds of questioning about what they're doing and what they did. A lot of times their pain is unconscious. Um, sometimes they can be assholes because they're really trying to, you know, get get it up off of them. Like, okay, like, can we just move on? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I apologize, whatever. But really deep down underneath that, there's a lot of shame. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of hurt. Mm. We're going to just jump into this question because the, 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 the gentleman who wrote in today, um, not today, but whose question I'm sharing today, um, he got it from all sides. Mm. He got it from both sides. Yeah. You know what I mean? He has cheated and uh, been cheated on. Mm. And um, we're just going to I'm just going to share the question um, and then we'll 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 take a stab at it. So um, this is an anonymous question. Um, again, uh, if you were not um, listening earlier, you can send your question into us. Um, the email is in the comments, and um, and we're going to uh, be bringing people on live very soon, um, so that you can share your story and so that we can see you face to face and help you work through some things. Mm-hmm. All right, so. Uh, Here's a question. I've been following your advice for years and really value your perspective. I find myself in a situation that I never thought I'd be in. Throughout our 10 year marriage, I've made some serious mistakes by cheating on my wife multiple times. I know I've hurt her deeply and I've been working hard to make amends and rebuild trust. However, recently I discovered that my wife has also cheated and she's now pregnant with another man's baby. I'm struggling with so many emotions. On one hand, I know that I'm wrong. I know I've done wrong, and I don't really deserve to judge her actions. But on the other hand, the thought of raising another man's child feels like an insurmountable challenge for me. I'm torn between wanting to stay and work things out for the sake of our family and feeling like I can't move forward knowing that she's carrying another man's child. I love my wife deeply and I don't want to break up our home, but she doesn't believe in abortion and I'm not sure I can get past this. I want to stay and fix things, but it's really hard to imagine raising another man's baby. She constantly talks about what she's had to deal with from me and I don't know how to deal with my mistakes and the fact that she's having another man's child. Please help. Well, 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 my, my, my. That's a lot. It definitely is a lot. And so, number one, I want to give you kudos for, um, and, and just commend you for having the courage to to write in and ask the question, um, you know, and seek support, seek help. I know you're probably grappling with a whole host of emotions and um and, and probably the biggest one is um anger and, and and rage um but underneath all of that is hurt yeah you know is is hurt and so when i think about your question 
Bro, I'm sending positive energy your way. Like it's 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 um it's definitely a doozy and a heavy one. I like the fact that you were able to take ownership and accountability for for what you've done in the past and how you've shown up and how you've impacted your wife. And and so y'all have been married for ten years and you've been doing your thing, doing your dirt, um, disrespecting and and um not honoring um the vows that you had in your relationship. And so now you're at a place that, like, yo, there's this discovery. She cheated and she's pregnant. And and it sounds like, well, I don't know, but it sounds like if she would be okay with getting an abortion, right? Like moving forward and just getting an abortion because he put mm-hmm. in there, she doesn't believe in abortion. And I just don't know. He's like focusing on like raising another man's child. You know, he's focused on that. And, um, that if she was willing to do that, then maybe it would be more digestible. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but she don't believe in abortion. And uh, that's that's a rough spot to be in. So I do think that there's a couple of different dynamics at play here. So, so number one, y'all definitely need to get clarity about what do you all want to do? Um, as a family, you mentioned a family. So my assumption is that it could be just the two of you, but I'm assuming that it's you all plus possibly some children mm-hmm. that are in the <clears throat> equation. And, and so as a couple, um, well, she want to have a baby and she probably want to so, stay so with yeah. him and he don't want to have, he'd like, let's stay together too, but I ain't so, trying to so have that we, baby. Are we to assume that, um, that, that she I would make that assumption. You want to make that assumption, um, that she wants to stay with him. Cause he, cause he said that she's constantly bringing up what she's had to deal with. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think, I mean, she ain't gone away yet. And he okay. been cheating all this time. So Yeah, so she, so she wants to stay with him. So she yeah. wants to work it out. She wants you to be good with uh, this this um, scenario. And so with that being said, the question then becomes like whether or not you're okay with with doing the work that's necessary in order for you all to be this mixed, this blended family. And so right, can you even see yourself being a part of this type of family structure. Um, I think that's an honest conversation that you need to have with yourself, whether or not you can tolerate, whether or not you can digest the idea of raising another man's child. If the answer is yes, then then I would strongly encourage that you all get some additional support to be able to process through all of the emotions individually and as a couple to be able to process through the range of emotions that y'all are experiencing so, um, as a result of this. So can you say a little bit just as a man, I mean, the whole piece around raising another man's child like that, 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 you know, I can't see. He said that like a couple times. I can't just fathom raising another man's child yeah. and, and and this is not a tit for tat or whatever but when i think about historically um what i know in terms of you know some of the things that have gone down the unspoken things in families um and the spoken things you know i know a, a lot of women have raised other women's children mm-hmm. da, 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 da. they've true. raised other women's children meaning the mistresses um, a child, we, and and this has happened. I know it's happened. I've I've experienced this in terms of like folks that I've worked with, and I, and again, this is not a tip for tat, right or for wrong, or anything kind of like that. Like it's all cr- kind of funky. It's real funky and messy. But I feel like um, I feel like I hear I've heard more like, and this may just be based on my own exposure or whatever. I feel like I've heard more about women from since the beginning of time, you mm-hmm. know, kind of taking on. Yeah. Somebody else's child. You know, what was the movie? Um, Fences mm-hmm. with Denzel and what's that? With, um, Viola yeah. Davis, right? And this kind of thing happening. Not that they should have. I'm not even saying that, that women should have or that we that we somehow did the right thing per se. But I know that that's happened where we're able to, you know, historically kind of like distinguish between the child you know, and the issue, mm-hmm. the child and that other person, you know, and, and in some way, the child is protected by our empathy, by our compassion, by our knowledge, you know, that you didn't ask to be here. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to, not that it's not, not that it's not hard. I'm not yeah. saying it ain't hard, but you know, there's just a, dis- I'm, there's just a distinction between mm-hmm. like, this is what grown folks did. This is not who you are. Yeah. And I, and I, and I know that, you know, people find out when they like 45, like, did you know that cousin so-and-so was actually 
daddy's daughter <laughs> from from a family that he had, you know what I mean, down the road, you know, for a few years. And mommy just, you know, mm-hmm. she came on in and was with us. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that has happened. So, I mean, so this like whole another that, man's child. It sounds like what you're saying is that, you know, y'all have been dealing with it. Y'all have been tolerating it. So we as men, we just need to suck it up. <laughs> no. I mean, it sounds like that's what you're saying. Like, get over it. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. The, the, I'm just, I really, I'm, like, I'm really, no, I'm really curious about you know is do you feel like and you can't speak for all men but do you feel like that that you and the men that you are aware of that y'all will have the same capacity for for, for the empathy and ability to stretch and i mean let's not let's not overlook the fact that in his situation she been dealing with him doing all of this stuff for a long time she just mm-hmm. had a really big complication well bow 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 Hey, what's up, y'all? So we know you're enjoying the episode, but check this out, y'all. We're not just any old random couple that's coming on YouTube every week just giving relationship suggestions and stuff like that. We're way more than that, Mm y'all. We're trained therapists and relationship coaches. This right here is my beautiful, incredible, sensational wife, Yana. And this right here is my dapper, debonair husband, Ayize. So y'all, we just want you to know that there is more. We don't want you to just be a spectator. We want you to get in here with us and join our community. We have all kind of folks who are doing their personal work, their relationship work. We have sister circles and men's lounges and trainings, and we address all kinds of things from infidelity to disconnection to communication issues and sex and intimacy issues. Look, the solution is at Blancor. Dot com. Join, Come join us. us. The complication of pregnancy, mm-hmm. but he's cheated multiple times. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And he was so, out of pocket. You know what I mean. And so, like, do you feel like men have a harder time with? Absolutely. The, I, I feel like they do. I, I, I just wanted to see if you agree with yeah, me because nah, I feel I mean, like that's, that's men just don't facts, have like, the same level of flexibility, stretch, com- compassion, empathy with these kinds of things. So something that stands out to me. So you say that men don't have the same amount of flexibility, compassion. Am I saying as a, I know some men do, but as Mm -hmm. just in general, and I know that all men aren't the same, Mm y'all. I think that, that women, women may be more, more um, nuanced when it comes to compassion, empathy, and flexibility. But in a scenario, in a situation like this, there's another variable that women have to contend with. Mm. And, and that variable is, is um, do I choose to be by myself? And will I be able to be in relationship with somebody else? That's what women have to deal with? Uh, yeah, I, I think that that's something that's up. So if I decide to end this relationship, uh-huh. a man is better than no man. It's sometimes the paradigm and the perspective that women are taking. And so, and why I'll are men not taking that perspective? Situation. I mean, because there's way more women out here. Yeah. And so the pool of eligible men to pull from is limited. And so I really have to grapple with, as a woman, I have to grapple with the idea that if I choose to exit stage left when it comes to this relationship, will I be by myself? Will I be lonely? Mm -hmm. And so that's something that's up for contention and something up for consideration when it comes to the decision that they make. Um, However, at the same time, too, I do think that innately women operate from a more relationship-based space in terms of relatability, in terms of compassion, in terms mm-hmm. of engagement and um, empathy. And so it's easier to access that. It's our superpower. Yeah, it is. And mm-hmm. it definitely is your superpower. And so I think that it's easier for them to go there, but what makes it even more complicated is the fact that if I don't go there and I choose to end this relationship, um, then I may be by myself. And so women choose to stay. In situations like that, whereas men, um, you know, may just say, like, I'll just get with somebody else. And it's really messed up, um, mm. you know, because there is a greater pool of women who are out here and who are available and who are really looking for men. And some who are really thirsty, yeah. not that you need to be going after those women or not that you shouldn't be working on your relationship. But but that's what some men think, mm-hmm. that I'll just go find somebody else. And so but with that being said, aside from that, I do think that the weight um, the weight is heavy on both people. Like it, it's, I mean, what's different is that it's not in your face every day when it comes to a woman. And so, if your man gets gets another woman pregnant, you don't have to see the other woman going through the process of pregnancy yeah. for the nine months. But that's if, rough. If, if I, if my, if you were to get pregnant by somebody else, 
I got to make a decision as to whether or not I'm a content. I mean, whether or not I'm a stay and and deal with seeing somebody else's seed growing inside your belly. I know, I know, I know. That's hard. That's what, rough. What would you but, do? What but, would you do? I use. Why you ask me? Like, I mean, again, <laughs> it, it's, that it's, would it's, never happen. That would never, yeah, would never happen. happen. I mean, it, it's, do you think that it's okay for me to answer that question? What do you mean? Is it okay? Okay for who? For me? To me? For the public? What? Answer the question. Inquiring minds want to know. The reason why I'm hesitating on answer is answering this question, y'all, is because you don't really know till you win it for real. Not just. But that. first of all, that would never happen. I just want to be clear. But go ahead. And not I know people that. say never. Don't never say never. But we done been through some things, and we ain't going back down no paths. Go ahead. So it's not just that. Um, I'm very keenly aware of the weight. And and um, the responsibility that we as trained therapists and coaches carry. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times what we're doing is we're speaking to you um, through the lens and from a perspective where we're offering advice um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's based off of our professional experience, but also our personal experience, too. Um, and so for something as significant and serious as this, the reason why I say I hesitate is because there's somebody that's in the situation and what I say may influence um, what they decide to do. And so that's what I get concerned about when it comes to topics like these. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to walk that line right now because my wife is looking at me a certain way like, I am? please do share. No, I'm not. Um, I, I'm, 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 no, let me say, I'm mm -hmm. totally fine if you don't want to share. I, I don't. Do I, did I have a look on my face? A little slight look. My, my look is... <laughs> My look is like I was thinking honestly. That's how I was thinking. <laughs> who cares? Like, <laughs> so it's not the who cares, right? And I definitely understand where you're coming from in terms of uh, the influence, right? But I am an individual. I am a person. I am. I am a. I am a therapist and a coach and a wife and a sister and a woman and a I, like. Like I am my own person. And, you know, I'm big on people having good, strong boundaries around knowing who you are and who I am and who you are. And who mm -hmm. are. So just because I have a feeling about something mm -hmm. and because I'm sharing something, it doesn't mean I'm even sharing my professional perspective. I'm sharing from a feeling place like I get to be human and I get to be a professional and all those things wrap up into one. And if you're going to be trying to copy me. Well, you're going down the wrong path anyway. Don't copy me because mm -hmm. then you'd be doing like um my husband told me not to do and drinking out of straws with lipstick on them, I which did, he which I? he thinks is tacky. It wasn't um, the straws; it was the cup. It was the it was the the, the tumbler. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just saying, y'all. Like you know, what I'm saying like I, I you know, so I, I I definitely I definitely understand the feeling that you have. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of a sidebar. You remind me of my this is this is the part of my husband that reminds me of my dad, um, my stepfather who's my daddy. You know, he was he is a pastor. He's a retired pastor. And and I'm more like my mom, and uh, and he would uh, as a um, pastor, right? He'd be like, I'm not. He would never. He would never go into a liquor store. Mm -hmm. It ain't like he had some wine or something. He yeah. wanted to have a cocktail every now and then when he goes out. But he would never go into. I've told you that mm -hmm. into a liquor store because he's like, somebody might see me, mm -hmm. and I I'm conscious about my impact. Yeah, and yeah. I respect that. Mm -hmm. And I'm more like my mom, who was like, mm hmm. Well, I'll be back. I'm going to the liquor store to get some wine for tonight. We have some people over. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I drink wine and it's all right. And you so do the people coming over to the house. You yeah. know what I mean? And she was also a pastor and the first lady and all of that. So I'm just kind of like that. Like, we can have a conversation about it if you want to, but I'm not about to tell you how I feel. I'm not mm -hmm. about to not tell you how I feel. Yeah. Um, so that's just I get it. So so with that being said, like I am going to share. And and um the way that I would approach it is this. And I also think that this is a healthy way for you to examine. Oh, I'm so curious. Um what you would do. Um and so so automatically, um, I'm pissed off. Like I'm I'm angry and and as I said a moment ago, like I would be that apoplectic person where uh, I'm just so infuriated and ashamed and embarrassed and you'd be angered. ashamed. You'd be ashamed of what I did. I would be. Oh, yeah, because I get that. Because you represent me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and now I got to answer questions for you, and I got to deal with other people's assumptions about our family dynamic. Like we're having a sixth child. Lord have mercy. And it's not even my child. 
Himself. But who would know? Who would know that? Also, would I'm saying know. this to the person who who wrote in wrote that question. I got to deal with that. I got to deal with the fact that somebody's uh, asking me. Why y'all having another? Y'all had number six. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, y'all wasn't done. So I'm. Yeah. Um, that's probably what this brother is probably thinking. Yeah, on some it's, level. It's, it's all of those questions, mm-hmm. and 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 then I got to also talk to my family, my um, you know, mm-hmm. birth family, and share with them what's going on, and then also grappling with the piece of. Maybe even possibly that this brother might be in this space. Do I protect my wife? Like during this time period while she's pregnant because she still is my wife. And so do I go along and make it appear and seem as though this is my child? And then later on after the pregnancy, um, you know, share what the truth of the matter is. And so there's a number of different things yeah. that I'm processing and, and pontificating, uh, you know, and trying to figure out. And so, um, again, I'm angry and, and I'm cussing you out. Um. Yeah, I'm sitting on my hand so that I don't. You don't knock me out. Yeah, so I don't get um physical, and and a lot of tears, a lot of disconnection. Um. Yeah, a, a lot of walks and and um you know a lot of talks with God, um and so I I think that I would um eventually arrive at a place where I decide to to stay in it, stay in it. I'm starting from a place of I'm done. It's over. It's a wrap. I'm walking. I'm leaving. I might even be flirting with the idea of you get out. I don't care where you go. You and that mofo's baby. You know, y'all... Get out of here. Like, mm-hmm. you, it's, it's like, I don't want nothing to do with you. Mm-hmm. But then I eventually arrive at a place where I make the decision to to remain married. And, and here's the biggest reason why. If it were just you and I, mm-hmm. it would be a wrap. But when you say family, I'm thinking about the children. Yeah. I'm thinking about our family dynamic and 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 what I value most is them having the both of us, them seeing us being able to work it out um, and resolve very difficult issues. Mm-hmm. Um, in some respects, I also want them to look at you and, and for you to be able to maintain some level of dignity mm-hmm. um, where it's not like you broke up our family, you made a mistake. A significant ass mistake. I would be wanting to protect you, and I want to make sure that that our children have a view of of um, the fact that you can overcome some really difficult, challenging, what seems like it's overwhelming and unbearable circumstances, and and figure it out mm-hmm. that your mom makes mistakes, that your dad has also made mistakes, and so I'll share the complete picture about the things that I've done as well too. But ultimately, I would stay um, and remain married because of the children, um, and and mm. I want them. That's 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 testy territory. It definitely is testy folks, territory. You know, because, we've even said to people like, "You yeah. can't be doing everything for kids." Yeah, and so so that that would be the reason why I make the decision to stay. Mm-hmm. But during that time period, um, there's evaluation that's taking place too, in terms of whether or not. And how soon I have the ability, the capacity to be able to, whether or not I have the capacity to even let my guard down and and begin to attempt to reconnect. Mm -hmm. It won't happen overnight. And it's going to definitely take some significant time. I got to do my own personal work in terms of going to therapy. And and my expectation would be that you do the same. And, and, um, yeah, we got to go to couples coaching, couples counseling as well. And so... Mm-hmm. That would be the approach that I take. And, and so like, and my goal, ideally, would be that I get to a place to where um, I begin to accept, you know, this newfound reality. And I start to let my guard down. And, and I embrace you. As I said before, denial, anger, bargaining, yeah. depression, and acceptance. I'm going through all of those different stages of grief and loss. And and my goal, and hopefully, is that I arrive at a place of acceptance, and that the anger 
has subsided significantly to where I'd be willing and open to connect. Yeah. And then ultimately our children will be able to see us engage in a way in which it feels more familiar, not the same, but just more familiar to what it felt like before. Wow. Yeah. You stand up, man. What would you do? <laughs> you ask me. Like if, I ain't think he was gonna come back and ask me. If I got if I got I was thinking it through. I was thinking about it though as we were talking as I'm listening mm-hmm. to you, like, hmm. Um, so for me, ooh, so now I know what you mean when you say like I'm blamely, our blame core members are listening. Like, really, Yana? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what you would do? Um, so for me, I mean, I, and let me just say this. I don't think either of us can say what we would for real do. We're just pontificating, hypothesizing on something that I'm clear will, will, we're not, we're not going to be experiencing. Okay. Yeah. And we look at it from sitting in a different seat. Too. You know what I'm so saying? We I'm, are, I'm in a different place in my life, in our relationship. Yeah. Like, it's just not going to be the case. We, but, got, we got over 20 years of being a And we done married. been through some old drama. Yeah. We done had our so, fair share. So, I mean, we're even us answering this question, mm-hmm. um, the answer is different now, a year 20, than it would have been a year 10. Um, this is year 21. Yeah, year 20. I'm saying two decades. Going on so. 22. Yeah, yeah. Keep it funky. But, um, <laughs> but, but yeah, so it's like we, we have a different vantage point. Mm-hmm. And, um, right, I mean, so it's, it's just, just, in a, just in a different place. It's yeah. just in a different place. But even at 10 years in, um, we had, we would have had a child that is um, like twelve, and then like why are you eight, saying ten? Oh, that's the brother who wrote yeah, in. He said ten, eight, years. seven, and six. Yeah, and so 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 I think that this is important. I think context matters, mm-hmm. and the context of our trajectory, our history, definitely, you know, obviously informs where, the answer that we're given. Mm-hmm. Um, I just you know, in a nutshell, I wouldn't go anywhere. Um, I would whip your ass every day for like like a long time. I just every said day. I'm gonna sit on my hands. Whip your ass every day. I, I would, said, you know, verbally, I said I'm gonna sit on my hands. verbally, <laughs> physically. I would be doing all the things. See you know what I'm saying? To motherfucking like whip your mother. You know what I'm saying? Like go on your ass. You know what I'm saying? I would just I would pull out all of the, you know. I, but I'm not going nowhere. But you've been cheating on me though, and I'm. So so when oh, wait a minute, hold on. What's what's the what's the yeah, scenario? It's the same scenario, like you know, I'm I got a girl pregnant. I've been the one doing it all for a long time. Yeah, you've been doing it all for a long time. Okay, I'm still whipping your ass every day. Really, bro. I'm doing all the things. Um, I'm I'm not going to be mature about it, but I'm not going anywhere. I mean, I'm I'm just gonna my anger is gonna be my anger. I mean, you were so poetic in, in yours, but um, that that. You said you're not going to be mature about it. I'm not. I'm not. I just know that. I just know that, like, if, if that's happening, I'm not. And I'm staying because I'm not going anywhere. And I'm not going I'm not going anywhere, not just because of my children. For sure, they play a part. But I'm not going anywhere because I can't see living without you. I can't see not being with you. Because mm. you are my person. You are my, 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 my one. Mm-hmm. I know you. I know your heart. I know what we have. I know what God has given me, and I know what God has given us. Mm-hmm. And I'll get back to God after I whip your ass, and after I, you know, I said that like ten times. Do man. a few things. I'll get back to that, but I will. I will. I will go off. Mm-hmm. I would have to go into. The, I had this tell. Oh, you daydreaming? Are you staring off in the distance? Like, <laughs> you're just imagining the place that you would go to. <laughs> We get it, boo. I like, had to we, tell the blam. I had to tell our blamely members, like y'all gonna have to take over. Come get me. Come get me. Put me in the sister circle. Put me in the middle of the circle. We need to go get a house. Y'all need to come pray over me because I'm, I'm, I'm imagining things. I'm going off, and I'm going in, and I'm doing it until I can get all the rage out. You know, I think you know it's important too, right? Like I, like. I mean, that's unfair. Why is it? Unfair? It's not about being fair. I mean, it might not be about being fair, but I think that we as men, we got to exercise a certain amount of restraint. So I would feel all of the things that you feel. If I was a man, I'd be locked up because I'd whip your ass as a woman. God damn. I would. That's just the inner feeling that I have if I was a man. But but I would would, would be raised differently. But that's not right, though. Of course it's not. But again, 
I might be hanging that's why, out. That's why we got to be, you know, responsible for what we convey here. It's not right to do that. To do what? To for me to whip you, whip you every day. I mean, yeah. I mean, so you're saying that. I'm, I'm not, saying verbally. I'm saying I'm not. I don't care. I'm. I don't care about my impact to you. That's where I'm gonna be at. Mm-hmm. We talk about all the time. You know, pay attention to your impact over intention. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be in that space. That's all that come up for me right now. I know enough to know that I'll transition out of that space. Yeah. You know. Um. After a while, mm-hmm. and and I won't be in that space forever. And I know that underneath all of that is a lot of hurt and a lot of pain. I know all of that, but the only thing that comes up for me is I'm staying, and we're gonna get through it after I finish being after I finish getting through my rage. And I'm going to have to go back to counseling to work on that because it's going to kick up all of the rage of yesterday and the day before and the day before mm-hmm. of all of the, all the things that have happened to me in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like that's like, I think I said already, did I just say I'm, I'm a recovering, I've, I've always said I'm a recovering aggressor hall. Like I said that early on in our mm-hmm. relationship, I'm not really that person anymore, but I think that would revive that person. But I'm not going anywhere because I do, I love you so much. Do you love me enough to take ownership of what you've done and be accountable for it? Like, if if all of the rage and ire and aggression is pointed at me, like, in a moment like that, are mm-hmm. you able to, would you be able to see that, that, that you've done some things yourself. I would assume that that has already happened because the brother, and when he wrote in with the letter, he said, I've been working on making amends and now I found out. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I would I would be doing that. Not that that's a one time thing or that yeah. that's a, but I would but I would definitely feel like I would already be in that space, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but now that I not found this out, well, you know maybe maybe it won't be like that. Maybe I'm a lot of talk, but that's how I'm gonna feel. Yeah, I'm gonna feel like f you and everything you stand on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how I'm gonna feel, like, mm-hmm. oh Lord. But I know that eventually we'll get to where we need to be. Mm-hmm. I know that again, y'all. We just went. We just went through a what if scenario. We are two people who have been together since high school. We've been through a lot of stuff, um, and we are now standing at. You know, uh, 28 years together, almost 22 years married, and um, and we got a lot of history. And we have experience seeing other people go through these mm-hmm. uh, situations and also early on in our relationship going through uh, similar situations. So I'm saying that, that with all of that, I just want to give you context because I do think that there are some people who need to roll out. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Some people need to, because your partner is not uh, in the right frame of mind. You have gotten quiet and tried to figure out what you're going to do and how you're going to roll. And you've let them know, I want to work this out and all that kind of stuff. Um, And they're just not showing up correctly. Mm -hmm. They didn't show up last month, the month before that, the month before that, or this month. And, you know, it's just they're, 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 they're just in a place where they're they're not even making any progress, and um, I just want to say this because every time we do a, a episode where we're talking about stuff like this or we're giving our opinion, I recognize that we have Blamly members. Again, for those who do not know, that is our membership community. It's a real community of folks who are doing their personal work and their relationship work. And you may say, "Dang!" Like on the, when we watch all on the on the cheat code, right? You know, what I'm saying like, you know, y'all to be like. If this is, you know, there's an ongoing kind of not showing up, then there's some there's a, there's a, some decisions you need to make. And when we're inside of the community, it's not that I'm that I'm not that I don't feel that way. But if you do a check in with me, for example, right, yeah. I'm trying to sense where you are. I'm sharing that with you, but I'm sharing with you a lot more within the context of your individual situation. Mm-hmm. So I'm talking to you about the things that you need to do and show up regardless. And, and some of y'all listen to that part, but you don't listen to the part where I say, um, you know, you, you, you didn't get an answer. You didn't get any response. He didn't, he didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. He's still not, 
Well, that's information for you. Mm -hmm. A lack of response, a lack of showing investment is an answer. Yeah. You don't have to just kind of sit there and be like, well, I don't know what he's doing and I'm trying to figure it out and I'm doing my work. And no, you know, because he's showing you. Mm -hmm. And so and so and so I'm saying that to say that we will never recommend or tell anybody that they need to be done with their relationship. They need to be over it. They need to be. We'll never do that. But some of y'all need to be done with your relationship. You need to be over because on the Chico podcast, we could just talk talk about it. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all do. And so I'm saying it like this because some of y'all some of y'all do. Even though you said that you would stay. Even though I said I would stay. Mm -hmm. So I just I just want to I just want to be clear. But some of y'all. Y'all in a situation like me, y'all, you know, we got people in our community, they're like, they've been together for 15 years, 20 years, 25, 30. Mm -hmm. And you got a partner who's leaned in. You got a partner who's trying. You got a partner who's connected in. You got a partner who taps out at times and who's not perfect, but they also um, are absolutely um, in the game of wanting to restore your relationship. Mm -hmm. They mess it up. Yeah. They don't be knowing the right things to do and say. But they show up on uh, on 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 time when it's time for you all to come to uh, our community for mm -hmm. a something or you know whatever it may be, and they don't do it all the time. But you, but they but they not tapped out. You tired of them, but they not tapped out. Mm -hmm. And that's a different that's a different situation. Yeah, yeah I would agree. That's, that's a different situation. So some of y'all, your men, they've been tapped out from the beginning to the middle to the end. You still talking about I'm just gonna do my work. Mm -hmm. Part of your work is to keep it steady. I mean, that's facts right there. So you know, just to to revisit this whole idea of what would I do versus, and also what would you do? Um, we provided context to our answers, y'all. And one of those, one of the primary things that we lifted up was after you deal with the anger, the rage, and the depression. Uh, fundamentally you arrive at a place of acceptance and that's number one acceptance in terms of what your situation yeah. is but you're also looking at your partner to see what are they doing to demonstrate that they still um, are trying to make this right you know was it a mess up was it a big ass mistake or is that just how they be how they move and how they flow in terms of their day to day like they're disregarding you they're minimizing the value of the relationship do they really get that, that you are the priority and if not you know, what my wife is lifting up is of extreme importance that, you know, you got to make some significant decisions and it might be time for you to go ahead and step. But if they are showing you that, that, you know, this is wrong, I messed up and, and, and it was a huge mistake and it will never happen again. And, and I'm here in this and I'm for you and I'm for us and I'm about rebuilding and trying to make it work and let's get through this. And it feels like it's a collaborative experience. Mm -hmm. And, then, then they're showing up in a different way. And so I do think that you should pay attention to that and, and move accordingly. Um, no matter how you slice it, though, this is the fuck shit. <laughs> it, it, it really is. And, it and, is. And so, this is know. the funkiest of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I, I want to speak to the brother who sent in um, the question. And I just, again, um, as my husband did early on, he, he gave you kudos for just sharing, right, from a place of vulnerability. And I, 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 I'm going to tell you what uh, one of our mentors and coaches uh, tells us oftentimes when we're asking questions. They say, well, it depends. It depends. So what do I do? Do I stay in this relationship? I want to get to the bottom line of your question. Do I, do I move on? I just can't see it. Well, it depends. And I'm going to tell you this. If your wife is showing up the way that my husband has talked about, if you've been showing up that way, if you all both know that you want the marriage, you want the relationship, you want to be able to move forward, you want to, you want to change things, right? And you feel the love, you feel the connection, even underneath all of the hurt, anger, and, and disappointment, and betrayal. If, if that's all there, then I have to lift this up. I know some of y'all going to have a problem with it. Not being able to deal with that, that meaning the child, it is, it is an ego issue. Mm. It comes out of the ego. It's because it's the, it's the ultimate demonstration, the physical demonstration of disrespect, the mm -hmm. physical demonstration of disregard, of mm -hmm. betrayal. It's ego. And so what I would say is you need to do, if you can say that you and your wife have the mindset 
like I just talked about, right? Y'all ain't perfect, but y'all really are trying. Then you need to do a reframe. I, we know we know people who've done reframes. Mm-hmm. We know people who've got children outside of marriage and they figure it out and they come together and they move forward. And you need to do a reframe and a reset so that you can figure out how you can move forward together successfully. If you know, I've said this at times in my life on any number of issues, I'm not that mature yet. I am not that evolved yet. Mm-hmm. I do not have that level of patience I do not have that level of capacity and I am not interested in developing myself in that way. I'm just not. You can judge it, but that's my truth. If you know that that's where you are, then you would be doing a disservice Mm -hmm. to yourself, to your wife and to your family to stay in a situation where you're really not going to be, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Emotionally invested in the building back up of the new relationship that you all have and figuring out how you all cultivate this new family. Mm -hmm. You're going to do a disservice. You'll harm that child and you'll scar that child and you'll, you'll handicap that child Mm -hmm. uh, far more than you'll ever help that child. And so I, I don't judge whatever path you decide to take, but it's not a yes or no answer. It's not a right or left answer. It's not a wrong or right answer. It's what is your answer? Mm -hmm. What do you have the capacity to do? Where does the love in the relationship take you? It only take you so far. Mm. It only take you so far, mm-hmm. and then the skill set, the the capacity that you have, where will that take you? And if you know it ain't gonna stretch out long enough, mm-hmm. then you gotta do what you gotta do, uh, so that you can honor your own self. And as we get ready to come to a close, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, and I don't mean this with any shade at all. Because this is this is this is this is God's way. It's not a, it's not a negative, but we do reap what we sow. Mm. We reap what we sow, and so you've been sowing seeds elsewhere, and this is what has happened. It's not shade to you; it's just clarity. And if you can look at things from a spiritual place and understand, wow, my God, this is where I sit. And look at what the spiritual lessons are in this. You might be able to continue to move forward. And you might be able to use your story, step on top of it, and share it with somebody else and be a blessing. But if you're not to that place yet, and you just don't see that you can ever get to that place, then roll out. I mean, not like that, just roll out. But you know what I mean? Do what you got to do. This has been deep. Um, Definitely deep. That last comment about you reap what you sow. I can hear some people saying, but I ain't been out here sowing nothing. But yet my man or my woman is out here cheating and they're having a child and I ain't been doing nothing myself. Oh, yeah. I ain't talking to y'all. But reciprocity happens on every level. That's a conversation for another day. Mm. But I ain't I'm not, I ain't talking to y'all. Mm. All right, y'all. This has been another <laughs> episode of The Relationship. <laughs> cheat code we hope that y'all have been able to get some value mm-hmm. you've been blessed by this podcast episode please like please comment and please share and please catch us next week for another episode of the relationship cheat code peace y'all peace